pinned my feeling that it's time to just go for it in life because the years they fly by so why not live every single day like it's your last as cliche as that sounds I'm just so excited to go on this adventure and start spending every single day doing what we want to do with our day anyways I'm just happy for the decisions that we made and my 25th birthday was a good reminder that life goes by so fast and I'm only gonna be young once and it's time to just do it so anyways um, we've been really busy the past few days cleaning out our apartment. This is the same room that I did my last little video in when I was talking in the beginning of my uh, closet clean out. So as you can see, it is super empty compared to when you guys last saw it. In the last clip, my little bathroom area was full of stuff and this room was full of furniture. So we listed all of our furniture on Craigslist and we were able to sell it so fast. Definitely a tip for you guys, if you want furniture that holds its value and is really easy to resell, go for the Ikea stuff. Anything that we had that was from Ikea, as soon as we posted it, we got emails right away of people who wanted to come and buy it and it's very easy to take apart and we pretty much got every dollar back that we spent on the furniture. So I'll just show you guys around our house a little bit and do a little update on our moving progress and then I want to answer a question that I have been getting a lot lately that I think is really important to address. So stick around a little bit, I'm going to get to the tough questions. So this is the room where I usually was filming my YouTube videos the past few months. Everything is gone, we've completely emptied out this room, nothing left on the walls, no furniture, everything is all cleared out, which feels really nice. However, the one area that I really struggle is with my bathroom products. So I have moved them into this closet and you can see I still have a lot of stuff to cut back on. So I have all my like makeup brushes, here's some first aid stuff like medicine, contact stuff for Matias, you know, my dry shampoos, more makeup, more hair stuff. It's just really hard for me to compact everything down into like one makeup bag but I'm gonna do my best to make it as minimal as possible. Again, I don't wanna get rid of the things that I love that make me really happy, and I love playing with makeup. I love looking nice every day, so I enjoy wearing makeup. I enjoy doing my hair and things like that, so I'm not trying to get rid of everything, but obviously I need to cut back because it is going in a suitcase, and I cannot have one suitcase full of makeup. So actually somebody asked me about the suitcases that we're bringing so I can show you guys. These are the suitcases. Matias and I each have the large Samsonite hard case for our checked luggage. And so we're each just going to have one of those and one carry-on each. So you can see we just have standard size carry-ons. That is my suitcase all exploded here because I have been picking through it. So everything that we are taking from the whole house needs to fit into these four suitcases. As you can see, we have a little bit of work left to do, but not bad. We are definitely getting closer every single day, so I think we can manage. So this is the main room that we're still working on clearing stuff out. As far as major things, we have this love seat and this sofa and that dining set. So today somebody is already picking up this one, we sold that, and this one we're still working on selling as well as the dining set, but we have a few days left to try to sell those before we will be giving them away for free. So wish us luck on that. Also have in this corner a few things that are getting donated or given to family members, but that is about it. So. So for me it was super helpful to look at things like one room at a time because it makes it less overwhelming. So I started in that first room that I showed you guys where I used to film. I got that completely emptied out, started emptying out the living room down to just big furniture pieces. So trying to get everything into the bedroom and eventually everything into those suitcases that I showed you earlier. So we're getting there. Okay, back in my old filming room just to chat with you guys a little bit. I have the best lighting in here. And I wanted to let you guys know that I booked some more flights since we last talked. So now we are officially going to London in August for a YouTube event called Summer in the City. It seems like it's kind of VidCon for Europe, so we're really excited to go to that. They have a creator day where you can meet other people that do YouTube, and then there's two days of like, I don't know, events and meetups and stuff like that. So if anybody's in London, definitely let me know because I'll be there in August. And additionally, we are also going to Berlin. Um, we booked flights 
from Basel to Berlin and we are going again to a YouTube event. This one is at the YouTube space in Berlin and it's more of like an informational kind of like seminar thing for two days where they just talk to you about like your YouTube channel and give you tips and advice and stuff like that. So we are so so excited to go to London and Berlin this summer and kind of our plans are till the end of the year just to leave it open. Maybe we will end up loving it in Berlin or London and we want to book like an Airbnb or for a month or two and stay there. We're not sure yet. We definitely will be going to Northern Ireland and spending some time up in the UK because I haven't been there before and I am super intrigued to go there. So till the end of the year we kind of plan on maybe booking places for a month or two or three at a time and traveling around a little bit before we get into a commitment of an apartment and all that kind of stuff. Now the question that I wanted to address in today's video was Sarah, how do you afford this? I got this in the comments a few times. People were saying, how can you afford just to quit your job and leave? And I have addressed this a little bit before in some of my older videos, but I know a lot of you guys are new to my channel, so it's really important that I can share my message with you guys because the reality is that I don't come from a rich family. My husband doesn't come from a rich family. We do not have anything come easy to us, that is for sure. Since we got married three years ago, we have worked extremely hard um, to get where we are today and everything that we did was really intentional and basically we worked our butts off. So this all started kind of three years ago and the first thing that we did when we came here is realize that we cannot have debt be a part of our lives and it is something that is heavily sold to you in the United States. Everybody tells you, you need a credit card, you need a credit score, you need all these things, and people don't really ask why. And we did some research into that, and we kind of found out that you don't actually need it. These are kind of myths that are sold to us to keep people consuming, and I know a lot of you are going to say, hey, but Sarah, I need my credit card for emergencies, I need my credit card for my points, there's XYZ benefits, and if you believe that, you know, that is fine. I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise but for me personally for my husband personally we feel like getting out of debt was the best decision that we ever made it is so beautiful to wake up in the morning and not and not owe anything to anybody and we can attribute our success in our financial situation to a um, personality or I don't know how you want to call him a financial planner called Dave Ramsey he's actually based here in Nashville and he gives amazing advice of how you can get out of debt and plan for your future and reading his books and following his material is what allowed us to get out of debt save up money and go after our dreams so a few years back we spent a few months working really hard to pay off all of our credit cards and cut them up and never use them again and after that actually initially we had planned to buy a house for cash so we wanted to save as much money as possible because we knew we wanted to buy a house for cash a modest house it's just something back a few years ago we really thought that we wanted to do so we basically worked our butts off and I mean working 60 to 70 hours a week while going to school while doing all sorts of things in order to pile up as much money as possible so we continued doing this for about three years and then a few months ago we were finally in the position where we were here in Nashville and we could afford a house and we we went shopping and we saw houses and for some reason Matthias and I both had this sinking feeling that we're not ready for this this is not something that we want to do we're not ready to commit to one location and we decided kind of to embrace who we are and accept that maybe we aren't meant to own homes not now maybe not ever I think personally there is so much value in being location independent because when you are not tied to a certain area, it means you can take any opportunity that comes your way. If something comes up on the other side of the country, on the other side of the planet, you can up and go. And I think there is a lot of value in that. And I think that that is more of a modern type of lifestyle than the people who pick their town, settle down, and you know they're stuck with whatever jobs are available in that area. They don't want to move. And we just don't see that path for us. Obviously, like I said, we used to think that that's what we need to do because that's what people do when they they get married when they graduate college you gotta buy a house you gotta settle down and we definitely fell into that trap of feeling like that's what we needed to do but in the past few months we kind of came to accept who we are and it's all about just self-awareness and accepting who you really are instead of being somebody that you think you should be if you know what I'm trying to say here so anyways the money that we had saved up towards a house aggressively for three years we have now decided to invest in ourselves in our future in traveling in business ventures and things like that 
So basically we can go a few years and not work and not worry about money because we already paid the price, okay? We got out of debt, we worked our butts off for years and now we're about to go and make it work, you know? We're gonna take the money that we have, we're gonna invest it, we're gonna put it into business ideas, we're gonna invest in ourselves, in our relationship and just kind of see where it goes. So basically, no, there is no secret. There is no um, trust fund or something like that. We worked our butts off since we got married and that put us where we are here today. And by working our butts off, I don't mean cushy jobs that pay like $100,000 a year. We bartended and waitress and worked a lot of nights, a lot of weekends, a lot of holidays. We got to work in some places that allowed us to make a lot of money, which we are so, so lucky that we ended up in those amazing places. So we could go to work and not have to worry about you know making enough money. We were able to save up so much. And the reason we were able to save up, again, it ties back to getting out of debt. Because when we got paid, we had extremely minimal bills. Rent, insurance, food, that was it. There is no payments, there's no debt payments, no house payment, no car payment, no student loan payment. So all the money that we made hustling, waitressing, and bartending, and making drinks, and doing all of that, it all got saved. So yeah, that was amazing that we were able to do that. It took a lot of self-control, but with enough practice, it became totally, totally habitual. So I assume a lot of you might be asking how I can afford this, because maybe it's a lifestyle you're looking into yourself. So I really have to tell you, if you are not financially stable, if you have debt, if you are broke, please do not try to pursue this kind of lifestyle because it will be very stressful for you. If you don't know how to pay for things and if you're paying things on a credit card, you're gonna end up back home one day or whatever, back to reality and all those payments are gonna set in. So please, I'm begging you, I don't care what the commercials tell you, what you know the majority of the population, at least here in the United States, is telling you, do not travel on credit cards, do not book flights on credit cards that you cannot afford because it will not be a blessing in your life, it will absolutely be a curse and it will be really hard to get ahead if you're constantly worried how you're gonna make these payments and I just don't think it's a good idea. So I really, I think you need to get your financial house in order before you do these kind of lifestyle changes. I really do. I know on the internet there's gonna be a lot of people telling you you do not need money to live this kind of lifestyle. You can fund it through XYZ. And you know what, if you believe in all that stuff, I am not here to convince you otherwise. I'm just saying for me personally, as a married lady, I like to have some security. I am definitely a free spirit. But I like to know at the end of the day that my retirement is secured, I have an emergency fund, I have enough money to pay for health insurance and things like that because I personally would not enjoy traveling if I knew that one day I'm going to have to pay for this later on and if I get sick I'm not going to be able to afford you know, proper care and things like that. So I really think it's important that you have those things sorted out before you go. Be patient. That's one thing I know our generation struggles with. I know I struggled with this. You need to be patient because things don't happen overnight. There is no quick fix. There's no way to do this overnight, at least that 